Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now. Topping the list for us tonight, a six-on-your-side update on the tragedy along I-40 this week. We now know the victim's identity, who was struck and killed by a flying tire. Knoxville police tell us he was Terry Holm of Snellville, Georgia. Authorities responded to a crash along I-40 near West Hills yesterday, shortly after 1 in the afternoon. A Nissan SUV driving east on I-40 lost its tire. The tire then flew over the dividing wall, crashing into another Nissan SUV heading westbound. Holm was taken to UT Medical Center, where he later died from his injuries. Well, from a tragic accident to an overnight fire, we want to get you up to date next on The 7 at 7. Rural Metro crews responded to an overnight fire. This is out of East Knox County. Uh, firefighters responded to the house on Cedar Ridge Road, and we've learned no one was living there, and it was being used for storage. Now, we're told first responders were able to extinguish the fire and prevent it from damaging a nearby home. No one was injured. Meanwhile, Rural Metro is reminding everyone to be careful when using portable heaters and to never leave them unattended. Big 7 to 7 continues with another house fire we need to tell you about. Around 4 o'clock in the morning, Rural Metro also responded to an apartment fire in the Cedar Bluff community. Crews there arrived to an active fire on a balcony near 9100 Grayland Road. The fire was starting to spread to the unit above, but the occupant discovered it and immediately started alerting others nearby to evacuate. Thanks to the quick action of the men and women who responded, the fire was contained to the balcony where it started and did not spread to the, any other units. No injuries were reported, and the cause of the fire still under investigation tonight. Well, a heartbreaking update on our next Big 7 list for you tonight. A young man uh, that we have been following for some time now, Preston Wells, a 12-year-old Roan County boy, diagnosed with bone marrow cancer, has now died. You know, we've highlighted some of Preston's special moments here on WATE, including last Christmas when he sent more than 200 Christmas cards to inmates in Roan County. Preston inscribing each of those cards with hand, <clears throat> excuse me, handwritten messages of hope and faith. Well, just last month, he was one of 12 patients from East Tennessee Children's Hospital selected to be a special spectator for the Vols football game against UConn. Preston and other children also got to participate in the Vol walk and watch from the sidelines as the teams warmed up. I'm so honored to get to, just to get to be his dad, just to get to be a learner from him because he was my teacher. He really was my teacher. You know, he taught me about life and about giving, and he was a cool kid. On top of being a giver, he was a cool kid. He really was. And we'll have much more on Will's passing coming up for you tonight at 11 o'clock. The funeral, by the way, is set for Wednesday at 5 p.m. at Harriman High School. Big 7 to 7 continues with an accident out of Giles County with East Tennessee ties. Officials have now identified the two people killed in the crash as 45-year-old Jenny Blaylock and her father, 78-year-old James Blaylock Jr., both of Knoxville. We're told Jenny was piloting a plane that took off from Knoxville when it crashed into a hillside in a remote part of Giles County Thursday morning. Jenny and her father were the only two people on board the single-engine aircraft. The FAA still investigating the cause of that crash tonight. Those living at an assisted living center is getting a, well, a Christmas surprise they weren't expecting as our Big 7 at 7 list continues tonight. An East Tennessee assisted living facility is closing its doors in the new year, but residents found this information out on Wednesday. Prosperity Point in West Knoxville sent a letter to its residents and their families announcing the abrupt closure. The letter says the new owners do not see the business as viable and will be closing Prosperity Point on January 6, 2024. We spoke with James Stewart today, whose sister is at Prosperity Point. He says he was very upset when the letter was sent out. This 30-day notice is almost ridiculous at this time of year, considering some of these people don't even have family available to help them. Stewart tells us that he is going to put a deposit down on a new facility. He said one of the biggest problems that they are facing, though, is the increase in price for assisted living facilities and a low number of beds. Well, our Big 7 list continues with the Knoxville Fire Station now reopening. Uh, Knoxville city leaders gathered this morning to reopen Fire Station 6. This is in the Burlington community. It closed back in the spring after it was deemed structurally unsafe. Now, fire crews from Station 6 have been working out of Asheville Highway Station 16 while the city worked to make repairs. With the reopening of the building, Knoxville Mayor India Kincannon announced a new $1.5 million investment into the community. 
Next week, we are bringing to City Council a $1.15 million budget amendment to design and buy property for the first new fire station in Knoxville in nearly 30 years, right here in Burlington. It's going to be state-of-the-art facility, hopefully very close to where we are standing right now. It will provide not only life-saving fire, rescue, and medical services to Burlington and all of East Knoxville. City leaders have been working to revitalize East Knoxville. Well, the Old Smoky Distillery, the Holler, officially launching its new Popcorn Sutton Distillery brand after 14 years in the works. Named after the late Appalachian moonshiner, the distillery created two liquors to honor his legacy. They made a master blend bourbon whiskey and brought his original liquor recipe to market. Now, that is L-I-K-K-E-R, the way Popcorn spelled it. Today's launch was a hit in the Gatlinburg community with people lining up to get a chance to meet Pam Sutton, Popcorn's wife, who worked closely with Old Smokey, we understand, to create the brand. Now, she signed bottles, posters, and was happy to speak with each person who came through the line. She told me today that, that uh, the, the liquor tasted uh, as close to, to Popcorn's as, as, uh, as if he had made it himself. And, and so she's, uh, with her stamp of approval, I feel like we're off to the right start. The liquor is limited, but they plan on making more. In the meantime, we understand it will be available in stores.